Good job is what we want to hear from everyone. And where better to hear this compliment than from God himself. Hey, everyone. My name is Justin Kim, and you are on Inverse. And we're going to be studying the Bible on how to receive not only a mere compliment or mere praise, but the greatest words of all. Congratulations, good and faithful servant from the Lord Jesus himself. We found from Jesus' parables. Uh, in the studio, we have Joe and Siku. Hello, Hi. guys. And we have Israel. Hey, guys. Hey, guy. <laughs> and we have you guys, and we want to say welcome and thank you for joining us. We're going to be studying the Bible, so we want to encourage you to take out your Bibles and also go to uh, many websites to go to. Let's say you can go to inversebible.org, download the Bible study guide. You can also go to hopetv.org slash uh, inverse Bible, and you can actually watch the previous episodes. We've been looking at all the, the parables of Jesus, and we are in episode nine of this arc on stories that transform. Uh, Joe, if you can pray for us, and we'll go, we'll jump to Matthew 25 right afterwards. Let's do it. Heavenly Father, as we read the words of Jesus today, we pray that we our hearts might be open to receive them and apply them and live them the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Siku, we're going to go to Matthew 25, mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. In verse thir uh, 14, excuse me, verse 14. And then we'll just take it in bite-sized chunks. Yep. Okay. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them, and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Okay, we'll stop there, and maybe we'll take a little pause. And uh, Israel, can you kind of give us maybe, I know we talked about it, but we can repeat it again. I think it's it works, it's worthwhile our, for us to hear it also. But Jesus talks the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven in parables. Like what 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 is this kingdom of heaven motif? What, what is it supposed to lead us to? Yeah, you know, the, the, the uh, contextually speaking, historically speaking, the people of Israel, they thought that the Messiah would come and establish his, uh, he would take over the, the the throne of David, his father, mm. and he would establish this new order, world order here on earth. Mm. And so they were expecting for the Messiah to come. When Jesus came as the Messiah, he was trying to instruct the children of Israel that his kingdom was not of this world. Mm. And so he would try to, he would try to, the parables are designed to kind of help our minds understand and grasp the, the the policies the 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 government of a world that we've not really seen yet mm -hmm. and so he tells us the kingdom of heaven is not like an, any kingdom that you've ever experienced on yeah. earth uh, it's not a kingdom that you they rule with uh, power or force yeah but it's a kingdom that is designed to first of all grow in your heart from within you mm -hmm. and then express itself in your actions with the world around you mm -hmm. and then finally when he comes it'll be a kingdom that we get to experience hey you you, you talking as me has, has spurred on this question maybe i'll show this question uh we did talk we had a whole quarter on it on on religious liberty and you're, you're talking about these are political assumptions that mm -hmm. the people had and jesus is addressing those political assumptions by really not talking about the politics but talking about spiritual things instead mm -hmm. joe does does, does how much does what Jesus is saying, how does how should it, or should it at all, inform our political views? Well, certainly Jesus' parables put into perspective the, the challenge, political challenges we have in this world because there's an ultimate kingdom. Our ultimate citizenship is not here. Mm. Our ultimate citizenship is in heaven. So this uh, throne of David that you referenced, that was a promise from the Old Testament that the Messiah would reign on the throne of David. That was repeated through the angel to Mary, Jesus' mm -hmm. uh, mother. Um, but the New Testament teaches that that throne of David is in heaven. Mm. And so I guess one basic principle, first of all, is that that is the ultimate kingdom and the ultimate citizenship mm. that puts the problems and politics of this world, it downsizes it into mm -hmm. its proper perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of... of um Relativity, in a sense, yep. where what's objective and what's subjective. Yep. Yeah, perspective. Siku? And 
and I'll say too you have that a twinkle in your eye that you want to you want to jump into this yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that since God's kingdom is ultimately going to be established not on this earth, not on the sinful earth, because yeah. sin needs to be done away with yeah. for His kingdom to operate optimally. Mm-hmm. Um, bringing God's kingdom is not about politically trying to establish God's kingdom on this earth. Mm-hmm. It's not it, what when He's talking about you know Thy kingdom come in the Lord's mm-hmm. prayer. He's not saying now we're going to force people to abide by the rules of the kingdom of heaven that I have set set out mm-hmm. through political means on this earth. Mm-hmm. Um, what He's saying is that there's a spiritual there, there's the spiritual the spiritual kingdom of God mm-hmm. um, we can experience here on this earth, but the ultimate reality of it is not going to come until mm. Jesus comes and sin is done away with. Mm-hmm. And so that that ought to inform, yes, we are promoting the principles of God's kingdom on this earth, but we recognize that it's not through force, as Israel was saying, but it's through conversion. It's mm. through an inward experience that makes us subscribe to the government of God. Mm-hmm. Um, but not by trying to force people mm-hmm. to abide by what mm-hmm. God has said. That we it are. seems like any political system that we have here now is a temporary mm-hmm. on how tolerant we are with this, this, the, the sins of humanity, right? It's really conversion that's gonna help us transform, uh, but we have greed, we have hatred, we have violence, and with these things, like how do we just get along with unconverted, un- untransformed, including ourselves, in that uh, in- into tolerant? I mean, how, these are just temporary things, mm-hmm. and and God and Jesus's words are a lot more. Um, uh, they trace, they tra- transcend all that. But the um, thing is, that yeah. for, for the audience of Jesus, they would have loved. If Jesus would have spent his time attacking the abuses of Rome, the yeah. Roman Empire, and there was a lot of corruption in the Roman right. Empire, yeah. just like there is in the kingdoms of this world today. But Jesus spoke to problems much closer to home, which was mm. so much more comfortable for his audience. Mm-hmm. He dealt with problems in Jerusalem, but he was really dealing with situations of the heart. Yeah. And, and this is why Jesus says in, in Luke 17, verse 20 and 21, that uh, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, for the kingdom of God is within you. Mm-hmm. And so while, while man is trying to look for all these political solutions to spiritual problems, Jesus isn't going to pursue political solutions to spiritual problems. He's going to deal with the heart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Amen. Well, from that perspective, I just want to ask a good uh, foundation. And we're looking at and we're looking at Matthew twenty-five. Uh, in Matthew twenty-four and twenty-five are about Jesus coming again the second time. Uh, that's kind of the framework. And then here we see in fourteen and fifteen, uh, Israel. What's going on? We have a guy here, and he's giving his goods out to to three. Was it three mm-hmm. people? Yeah. 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 So the perspective here of the kingdom of heaven is the fact that there, the story is told about a man who is going to a faraway country mm-hmm. and he has uh, talents, mm-hmm. gifts that he has to, uh, that he wants to gain interest on. Mm-hmm. And so he gives them to his, uh, I don't know if they're his servants. Mm-hmm. He gives them to his servants. Verse 14, and, he called his own servants. Mm-hmm. Amen. All yep. right. <laughs> and then, uh, and then it, it is, uh, it is a responsibility of these servants to make, uh, to make best use of these talents or these funds by yeah. growing them. So talent is a currency, is yeah. an amount. It's not like talents, like a talent show, like I can, you know, yeah. swing Playing a bat. Playing yeah, yeah, okay, all right, all right, okay. Yeah. I used to think it, it was. It right? could, like, it oh, could, this guy's five talents, yeah. he plays a piano, he plays a, you know, he sings, and yeah. anyway. It, it could be, you know. It applies in yeah. that direction. Well, it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. okay very not good. just that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, five, two, and one. Mm-hmm. Any, any, any meaning with a number? Just one is higher than the other well yeah it says, okay. it, it says it's based uh, according to his own ability mm-hmm. okay so not each is given the same amount of, of talents okay because we we all have different levels of ability and we have different gifts and, and, and contributions so god's not going to expect me to do the same thing as each one of you because he's given me something different mm-hmm. and that's what we see here mm-hmm. so this is investment ability like in the immediacy of, mm-hmm. of the of the of the text so this guy ha- is is uh has the competence to do produce yeah. Five, so he's given five. One has the competence of one. He's been given one. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. all right. And and also, it's I think it's noteworthy that when he gives each according to his ability, there's no reprimand for the one who gets one talent. Mm. It's not like oh, you can only manage one talent, so I'm give you one, and you bad servant for only being able to mm. manage one. He just recognizes that everyone's 
capacity or capability of managing the funds, mm-hmm. the resources that he's going to give them is different. And that apparently is okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not required to manage five talents if you are a one talent guy. Mm-hmm. And God, well, <laughs> the master <laughs> is is totally fine with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. This is why later in the parable, he expresses equal appreciation for the one with two talents and the one with five. The five. It's not mm-hmm. like, oh, the five one gets more appreciation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's, 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 it reminds me of a story that um, my friend Andy used to, tells me over and over and over and over again once a year. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, he, he went to the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. It's a very famous uh, university for their basketball team here in, in the United States. And because he went there, this is a, the, the university that Michael Jordan graduated from and he played basketball in. They had this coach, uh, I forgot the guy's name. <laughs> you think I remember? <laughs> because yeah, he's he totally, the Phil? <laughs> yeah, huh? Phil? No, 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 no. Oh, it's no, not him? No. I don't know anything about sports. Uh, I mean, is this coach? Yeah, so his coach. <laughs> it might be like Dean, but anyway, right. I forgot I forgot his name. Okay. I'm gonna get blasted for this, right? <laughs> so uh, so anyway, um, what what's significant, the story that I they told- i tell you the story again yeah, for yeah, you to no, know. No, do not tell him that I forgot. He's, he will tell me the story twice a year. Uh, so the significance about the about this coach is, you know, he's coached some of the greatest basketball players of all time. They're playing in in the in professional sports now, and and some of them have risen up to the top of even the professional game. And one of them being someone who was known as the greatest basketball player of all times. And what's crazy about about uh, Coach Dean is that every time someone a player had a birthday, he would write a birthday card to every player. And Michael Jordan, what he says himself, what struck him is that he would treat all players exactly the same. Everybody, mm-hmm. whether you sat on the bench and you never played in a game or whether you were the best player he's ever coached, he would always give everyone that birthday card or, or whatever, whenever, whenever uh, special moments in their lives uh, came. And it kind of, it, and, and what was significant about it is that he did not care how, how, what kind of position or how you looked like in the eyes of the world, he treated every player with the utmost respect. And it kind of, it kind of to some, it was the story that kind of came immediately to my mind, you know, when this, when this uh, gentleman that is going to a faraway country gives his talents to people, he, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't value one more than the other. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is something, this is one way in which the kingdom of heaven is different from us. Mm-hmm. We think that a five talent person is better than a one talent right. person, mm-hmm. right. but heaven does not value you know, us based on how many talents we're able to manage. It just, it, it, it judges us based on how well we manage what we're able to manage. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the beauty of, that's the beauty of God that as Siku already said, you know, regardless of what we're able to manage, mm-hmm. Faithfulness or, or uh, appreciation is given not based on what we can do, but on the faithfulness in which we do the work that we are called to do. Mm. Very Amen. good. Very good. Amen. That is beautiful. Um, I'm here looking here in verse uh, 18 is when the story takes a little bit of a change. Yeah. Um, he who had received one went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. And then the Lord uh, all of these servants comes back. Um, why did this guy dig his uh, talent in the hole. Should we read what he says, or should we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Why don't we really answer for that? And so that's uh, by implication we... Uh, should we ask yeah. the guy? <laughs> yeah. Should we, should we follow what Siku is saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, well, let's yeah. keep on reading if that's what you're implying there. Yeah. Verse 20. Siku, can you read verse 20 for sure, us? I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, You delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He said, He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Mm. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Mm. But his Lord answered and said to him, 
you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have de deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back mine own with interest. Therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. They will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm. So why did this guy, uh, I think it's verse 24, yeah. uh, is a revelation of, of, uh, into his mind, why he, why he, why he uh, buried it. Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. What does that mean? I knew you to be a hard man. It's a difference of character perspective, yeah. Mm. It just seems like a continuation on a theme of several parables we've studied already where, okay. the, where the character has a misapprehension. Of God's character. Of God's character. I'm thinking of the prodigal son, you know, and of the older son. And I'm thinking of the servants and the wheat and the tares that have questions about the owner. Mm -hmm. And here again, it's another parable where there's a misapprehension of, of the person's character, mm. the person in authority, which represents God. Mm -hmm. How, how do we really, how do we see that today? How do we what are, so I'm, I, I, that's maybe an obvious question, but let's parse that out. How 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 is this manifested today? How do people different see God's character differently? I think similarly to how they saw it then. Number one in in the parable of the wheat and tares, people think that the the man is incompetent. You know, mm -hmm. does not understand. Uh, maybe that's a strong word to use, right? But they don't they don't they don't have full faith in his ability to solve the problem. The problem is big, maybe even bigger than him. Mm. Uh, and I think in today's society, we have the same thing. Like God, you know, if you're love and if you're powerful, then why is there evil, right? It, I think that's mm. a, a very uh, a similar thing. You have to not be one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think in that way, people misapprehend, they misunderstand the, the character of God. Mm. I think with the prodigal son, you know, Everybody, since we were little children, we've known, our parents have taught us, you know, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. As we get older and older and older, we kind of know that cognitively, but I don't think we understand it experientially once mm. we start going through life, mm -hmm. and which is what's happening with the two sons, right? They're going through life, and then they think to themselves, the younger one thinks like, life out there is probably better than life in here. And because uh, my father has rules in his house and because I have to be a certain way if I want to live in his home. And I think similar things happen to us as we get older, as we experience life, we begin to think like maybe maybe this Christianity thing, maybe religion is 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 more rules than necessary. And so, you know, we misunderstand the character of God because he has a law. We think him to be a hard man or in this situation, he's demanding. Mm. You know, he demands so much. He gives us something, and he expects something in return. And this makes him a hard man. Um, and and I think it has to do with the power of God here, right? That God gives us power, and 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 he's you know he says all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go do something with this. Like go make disciples of all men, baptizing them in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be a better person. And I think all of this creates sometimes within the heart of a Christian anxiety. Like, mm. I have all this talent invested. Like, God has invested so much into me. If I don't make something out of it, he is a hard man. And so I think these are things that I see in my life and in conversations with other people. Our understanding of God is is skewed mm. based on some of these elements. High expectations. Uh, when, when I was exacting. working. Yeah. When I was working as a youth pastor, I, I remember when I first started. I, I thought maybe the, the biggest question with the youth would be, <clears throat> does God exist? Mm. And I would share different apologetics and, and reasons that God exists. And the more I did youth ministry, the more I realized, in my context anyways, that uh, these youth, most of them believe that God exists. There may be 20% that are struggling knowing that question, but they, the ones that believe that he exists, they don't know if they can trust him. Mm. Yeah. And like, this is the big thing, just what you're describing. Even with those of us growing up in the church or in the faith, we have this, this disconnect where we know he's there, but I don't know if he's a good God. Because he may, what, call out your sins or he's exacting or just. I think that God's character has often been misrepresented through the church, mm. through leaders, mm -hmm. through believers. It, it's, you can, you know, use 
examples close to home, but throughout church history, just just look at the history of the church. When mm-hmm. in the dark ages, when there was a very dark picture of God portrayed, when there was, you know, a, a vengeful God that was going to burn people forever and these kinds of things. After that, had gone on for centuries. Mm-hmm. The reaction against it was, you know, the French Revolution and, and, and atheism and a, a worldview that just pushed God out of the way. Mm-hmm. That was a reaction to a twisted view of God through religion. Mm-hmm. I think um, maybe going, maybe bringing it a little closer to home in terms of our perception of or our thoughts about who God is. Um, you know, for children. Uh, children, their parents are kind of their picture of God. Mm-hmm. For children, it's it's about learning to trust and obey your parents, right? Obeying your parents because you trust them. And in a lot of homes, the trust isn't built. Mm. And so your first introduction to an authority figure who has the power to make your life pleasant or unpleasant, the power to provide for you, mm. your first experience of that type of a relationship, you know, for a lot of children is not positive, is not affirming of the character of God, you know. So when it now comes to a religious experience, that's the foundation that we're working with. Mm. Um, so that's the first lens that they've seen yes, of authority, of authority and, 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 and a higher, mm-hmm. higher sense of, of power out there. Yeah. 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 And and so I think, you know, going back even before you've experienced, you know, church and the pastor and, and different other, other forms of authority, you know, um, I believe that the devil has made it so our families struggle so much because True. then that provides a foundation that is skewed in our perception of who mm-hmm. God is and if we can trust him. Mm-hmm. Um, so as a, young, as a young adult, one of my biggest trust issues with God was like with re- respect to marriage, mm-hmm. was if, I, if I'm a Christian and I'm gonna get married, I should want to marry somebody who is a person of faith, but if I surrender this decision to God, if I allow God to lead in this decision, what if he leads me to somebody that I don't like, mm-hmm. you know? And, yeah. Ultimately, it really came down to a question of trusting God that he has my best interest at heart, mm. that he wants to give me what is good for me. Um, so it's a huge problem. Yeah. So this guy with one talent, he didn't trust God, he had issues, it was his parents' fault that uh, he he just couldn't trust this, this this owner. So blame it all on our parents, you know, we, yes. gotta, we gotta forgive our parents and love our parents, but no, this guy, he no. had issues with the parents, so instead, no. He, he buries his his talent in the ground, right? Yeah. Well, this makes yeah. me think of like Matthew 13. Maybe the guy that was like in the in the in the garden, he, he found the talent that the first, this guy yeah. buried. The guy with a five, yeah. the sequel yeah. to yeah. so he buys, uh, anyway. the prequel. Yeah. The, pre- the prequel. Yeah. He he he's um he's mis he's misunderstanding the actions of God. Okay, mm-hmm. you know. So here, for example, he says you're a hard man, and then he tells him why he believes he's a hard man because you reap where you have not sowed, and you gather where you have not scattered seed. Now, this this is a true statement about the the uh, the uh, the owner of this of the talents mm-hmm. because he himself, the owner, will then say you in verse twenty six, "You knew that I." And notice what he says. He sa- he doesn't say that I'm a hard man. Mm-hmm. Mm. He's like, "You knew that I uh, you know reaped where I did not sow and gathered where yeah, I had not scattered." Yeah, what does all that mean? Mm-hmm. So he's saying, I think two things strike me from here. Number one is th- that. You take this. This guy's taking the actions, and and this represents God, right? So he's taking the actions of God and misrepresenting those actions, which goes to tell you. It goes to show us that you know sometimes the the evidence of God's existence is not the problem, but is the way in which we view that evidence, mm-hmm. right? So God is God is uh, He has the ability to 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 reap where He has not sown. You know, it, it actually reminds me of creation. Right to be able to make something where something did not previously exist. This is a natural characteristic of God. Now, you know this this man with the talent that has that has been given the talent. He mis he misunderstands God's actions. You know, and he says because he has these actions, because he has sorry these abilities, it makes him this kind of a God, a hard God. And then so that that's one thing. You know, we we have the we have the tendency as human beings to misrepresent and misunderstand mm. the things of God mm. uh, and 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 his character. The second thing is the fact that this this uh he's considered a wicked servant because he says he believes something but he really doesn't believe it. You know, he says like if you knew that I sow where I do not uh that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter, 
and and you really were afraid of me, then this would actually have caused you to act differently. To get the interest. Yeah, and 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 you would have done that even more so. And and you know, it, it's like, you know, if if and 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 then it goes back to me, it goes back to this idea that we have these understandings of God sometimes where we believe he's he is a hard man, but he exists, but we can't trust him and so forth and so on. And we say, we're going to leave him. We don't want anything to do with him. But that doesn't really make sense, right? Because if we were to walk away from an evil God, then he's going to find us, right? He's going to have the ability to find us and to and kill us. us. Right. <laughs> so, so many times our lives are inconsistent with belief systems that we say we have. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the mind, the, the ability to think, the ability to reason is actually a talent. It's a talent that God has given us. And we misuse that talent. We bury that talent by the inconsistent way in which we think primarily about God. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to not miss the opportunity to point out what the master actually says about the servant okay. in verse 26. Okay. Where he says, you wicked and lazy servant. Hmm. Yes. So he singles out there may be misapprehension about the character of God and and all this but ultimately there's this servant himself is a wicked and lazy servant Mm -hmm. you didn't want to do the work Mm -hmm. so you found an excuse not to do the work was you miss you misconstrue who I am right like Mm -hmm. that I know this about you and it's a true statement that makes you a hard man but it's coming from your own heart Mm -hmm. because you are a wicked Mm -hmm. and lazy Mm -hmm. servant Mm -hmm. So I've, I think I've shared before a, a friend of mine who's, who, is, who is atheist, and as we've had discussions and conversations about God and da, 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 all these things, we got to a point where just logically thinking through it, it kind of makes sense that there is God. Mm. Um, but he got to the point where he was like, you know what? I don't want to believe that there's God because if I believe that there is a God, then I have to change my life. It's accountability. Right. And so because of what's going on in, in your heart, you don't want to. To, you don't even want to f- rightly understand the mm-hmm. evidence that is before you. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is great because this parable really recalibrates the image of God, the character of God in its proper light. Pro- um, practical takeaways that we can get away from this, right? What are they? Don't be lazy. Uh, don't bury stuff. When, Joe. I, when I feel insignificant, I'm a one talent person, but yeah. God puts just as much value in me. Go According to it. each ability. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in could, order to be faithful to God, yeah. I need to have a right understanding of his character. Right understanding of his character. God Father. gives us gifts. We don't give them, we don't get them because we're good. He get, We get them because he gives them to us and we should use them to help. Amen. Amen. Hopefully you have been inspired to be faithful in that which you have and that which you have been given and God gives us the power and grace to do that. That's my prayer for all of us and for all of you out there. God bless you guys as we study the parables of Jesus. We'll see you next week here in Inverse. Inverse.